guys, welcome. This is Jen Frost with Faith and Fabric, and I'm thrilled to welcome you back to our first free Motion Friday of 2022. I can't believe another year has passed. So we have been working on so many different designs, and today we're gonna to be working on a design that is a specific filler design. Now, I don't know about you, but I like to try to enter the new year, honestly, probably each day, but I think with it being the new year, it's a good time to talk about hope. And hope is a wonderful scripture line. We actually have this little line of scripture right by our front door. I'm gonna post it here for you. And it says, we have this hope as an anchor for our soul. And I love this line of scripture, you guys. So in our home, when you first walk in, there's a little wooden sign in the corner and it's got a picture of an anchor. And on that anchor, just below is this little scripture quote. So today we're gonna to be working on making anchors. And I know this is gonna be a more challenging design, but if you guys have been following along and practicing all your skills, you guys are gonna be experts at this one. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna show you some couple tips here on this, and then we're gonna head over to the cutting table and we're gonna take a look at how to practice it first on paper, some alternate design layouts, and then we're gonna head over to the sewing machine. Now, before we even get started going much further, we need to talk about what an anchor is. And we know an anchor is something that pulls down deep into the ocean and it holds boats firm and secure. So I wanna to talk to you about the parts of the anchor because these are the same parts that we're gonna be creating. So let's take a look. The bottom of the anchor, the curved part, is called the crown. The little corner part, where you make those little tiny triangles, are called flukes. The long center shaft is called a shank. The top is called the ring. And that horizontal line that goes across is called the stock. Now we're gonna be using these same parts in our design. So let's take a look at some key tips that we're gonna be using as we make our anchors. Your first tip is to make a right angle turn at the base of your anchor. This is where you connect the crown to the shank. Your second tip is to keep the horizontal stock line close to the ring at the top. Your third tip is to make a second right angle as you complete the second side of your anchor. Now making these right angles is really important because if you think, you know when you would draw like a picture of a cat, how you kind of like when you make their mouth and their nose, you kind of come up and you come back out of it, you're ending up with that empty space. Anchors don't have that. Anchors have that very, very smooth bottom. It's a single curve, like a smile. So when you come down one side, you stop and you're literally gonna pivot, make a right hand turn to come up. And then when you're coming back down, you're gonna go again hit that point and make a right angle and come back out of it. And that's gonna give that illusion of that very smooth, smooth bottom. Ready to practice? Let's head over to the cutting table. So let's first sketch this out. So you'll see when you make your anchor, you're gonna be starting at one point. You'll make your anchor corner. You're gonna come down. And then this is where we talked about making that right angle. You wanna stop and then you're gonna come up. You're gonna make the ring at the top come down just a touch, and then you're gonna follow straight back down. Again, when you arrive at that bottom, make a right angle to come out of it and end with the fluke. Okay, then you're gonna make another one. You're gonna trace that same triangle, come through the middle, stop, come up, ring, make your cross line there, come down and make that right angle here and come out. I wanna show you what happens if you don't make a right angle. So you'll see what you're gonna be tempted to do is to kinda of go like this. You make your ring, you're gonna come back down and cross it, you're gonna come down, and then you're gonna come out like this. And you'll see it ends up splitting your anchor. That's why you don't wanna do that. You really wanna make sure that you come and you're making that very sharp right angle on each one of those pieces. So I've, I've put some pre-designed lines on here. These are at two inches. This is a roughly the size I'm gonna put on my practice pad. I wanna show you an alternate layout. So obviously these, I'm making each one the same. And we've talked about this in other lessons where when you try to make everything the same, your eye notices if they're different. So one thing you can do here, we'll switch colors, is to maybe make them alternating sizes. So say we're gonna start first with a nice small anchor. Okay, I'm gonna come down. See, I automatically wanted to come up. I'm gonna focus here, make that right angle, and I'm gonna make a little anchor. Make my, my fluke, and then I'm gonna make my second one. 
I'm gonna make this a big one. Okay, come out. And now I'm gonna make a small one again. And you'll see what this does. It just adds a little bit more visual interest to your design. Um, it's not making them all exactly the same, and I'll stop there. But you'll see, whereas these all have to be exactly the same size, if you're alternating the sizes of your anchors, maybe you're making some small ones, some big ones, maybe even a medium one here. If you alternate those sizes, you're not gonna be able to look at it with such precision to say, oh, that one's too small, oh, that one's too big, okay? Those are the, the size differences. Again, the only real key thing you really wanna watch out for right here is that split. That split is not gonna end up looking like an anchor. And that's where, you know, I talked about if you ever drew cats when you were a kid, you kinda, you know, here's your little cat and he kinda had that little mouth that went like that with a little nose, you know what I mean? Um, to make your kitty cat. And that's that's not definitely not what you wanna do. That's a really bad cat, by the way. That's why I quilt, not draw. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to go ahead, we're gonna mark up our pad here with some markers. So I've shared these pens with you guys before. I love these, these are from iBody. I'll put a link to them down below, but they're heat erasable pens for fabric. And I know it always feels really scary to be using pens on fabric, it's oh my gosh, but I've never had trouble with these coming off. A little bit of ironing when you're finished um, and, and they come off no problem and they don't reappear. I've never had trouble with them reappearing. So knock on wood or plastic in this case, um, that's never been an issue. So I'm gonna pull my little pen out here. I'm gonna mark in black today. So you'll see I've got my little pad here. This is my 10 inch by 10 inch pad. Um, I'm gonna zoom out here for a moment here and then we're gonna take the look at marking this all up. So here's a little bit better of an angle. You guys can see a little bit more. So I'm gonna start off and I, because this is our little 10 inch practice pad, I'm gonna make my marks here at two inches again. So I'm just gonna start at the very bottom and every two inches I'm going to create a line. Like I know that feels really scary to be marking on your fabric like that with ink, but like I said, I'll show you at the end how these just come off with heat, uh, which is so wonderful. Um, you know, I've used some other other pens where, you know, they, they do disappear, but they come back. And so I was very happy when these were recommended to me because like I said, you don't have to worry about, um, you don't have to worry about them reappearing. So this is the first thing you wanna think about when you mark your practice pad is, um, oh, that one's out of ink. I'll switch over here to red. The first thing you wanna think about is how far apart do you want your anchors? How big do you want your anchors? You know, do you want them very large? Do you want them very small? Um, I'm gonna go with about a two inch anchor and then my anchors end up about two inches wide. So that's gonna give me, you know, roughly five-ish, depending on how the size I make on my little anchors here. You know, again, I'm gonna do some big, some small, but you wanna think about that spacing first. You know, I probably would not recommend going much smaller than about an inch and a half because you're gonna lose that design. Um, you know, you can take these all the way up to about three inches and I think they would be absolutely beautiful on whatever you're working on. So now that we've got our pad all marked up, let's head over to the machine. So let's start off like usual, supply checks. So we have our slow, steady ruler glider here. Again, this is that no friction pad and I just cleaned mine so it's working great. Now you'll see it's a little bit wobbly and that's because my my Janome, I, I think you guys know I sew on the M7, the Continental. It's in the shop for repairs. Um, my end of the year repairs are not done yet. So I just have my little tiny, this is a little brother and I love this machine. Um, it's just a little workhorse. So I've got that in here, but I'm using my Janome table uh, just so I can have some of that extension. So I'll give you a sneak peek under here. You can see what I'm talking about. Uh, the table doesn't exactly line up perfectly with the, with the machine. So there's a little bit of a little bit of wobble there. So, but you know, again, like I told you, I wouldn't sew without this pad because it just makes things so much easier for, um, for, for friction issues. So I've got my red sulky thread in here and I've got my free motion hopper foot. And here's that fabric we marked up together. So, you know, I'm gonna start just coming down with my anchors, make the ring at top, come down, go across to make the shaft or the shank, um, come back down and then put my little corner pieces on. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started here. I will pull my bottom thread. So I'm just gonna do a couple stitches in place here. Okay, and then we'll come around. 
You know, I think it's, you know, learning to re-sew on a different machine is always different. You, you kind of get used to the one you've been on for a while. So it'll be fun to see how, how these little anchors turn out today. Okay, now you'll see this is where I told you we, it's important to stop at the bottom. I'm gonna come all the way up. We'll make this a, a larger anchor. Yeah, see, I'm not as used to the tension on this one, but that's okay. We all can get the gist of what we need to get done here. We'll make our, our curve there. So you see, I've got that nice circle. <laughs> Well friends, sometimes you gotta just call it. And today was one of those days. <laughs> so as you saw, I was using my tiny little machine that I often use for pacing or for students that come over um, for my free motion and it, it just was not working. I'm gonna show you what was happening. So there was not enough space. Um, I was not actually able to even adjust the space distance from where my hopper foot was um, because of a little bit of thickness here and it was just making a mess and it was stressing me out. And so in the process of being stressed out, you can see I was forgetting to even like, I'll show you this side. I was forgetting to even come back and do the tops of my anchors. So I just, I, I called it. And I think that's really important. That's the second lesson for us today, right? We're learning not just about free motion quilting, but when to say when. It was when yesterday. So as um, luck would have it, amen to that. Uh, the shop called and my machine is back. So we are gonna pick up with a part two and we're gonna go ahead and continue working on this on a, the correct machine. So let's head to it. All right, let's give this a go again. So I'm gonna first start off, I've got my bottom thread pulled up. I'm gonna make my little triangle here, come down. You remember that right angle, stop at the bottom. Let me get that thread out of the way. Now I'm gonna come up. So much easier on the machine here. I love it. You know, I honestly cannot recommend this machine enough. Um, this is that, that Janome M7 Continental. Such a clean, clean machine. You just feel the power behind it. Okay, so you see I've come and I'm gonna come back up here. Swing and I'm going to add my little anchor corner. And we'll add the next one again so again doubling those triangles side by side they don't have to be the same they probably shouldn't be if you're trying to make your anchors different so you'll see this one i'm going to make a nice little anchor again always having that right angle you know this is one of those patterns um free motion patterns that's a little trickier than you first think because as you're going through this um it seems pretty straightforward but there's those straight lines are actually kind of hard to do and then remembering to swing that right angle each time can be hard. So I'm going to go ahead now that we've got a proper machine to do this on and I'm going to speed things up. exercise and rolling with the punches, wasn't it? So hopefully you guys had a chance to work on this one. Now I'm going to tell you, I found this to be a very, very challenging design. And that was surprising to me because I figured going into this, it just seemed like a couple basic curves and straight lines. And I think that's actually what the hardest part was, is that you were having a specific design with curves and with straight lines and trying to make all three of those elements work together, especially for something that is a visual cue. You know, we all know what an anchor looks like and we also know what an anchor doesn't look like. So if we make something that doesn't look right, it, we're gonna notice it. So let's take a look and see how it turned out. So here's the front. So you can see I've got, um, I've got four rows of anchors. I made them all varying sizes and I wanted to do that just to kind of show you a little bit of variety and you'll see more of that variety on the back. Um, I also pulled one of my rows from the back. Uh, basically, I didn't cut the thread at the end of the row. I pulled it over. So I want to show you what that looks like because that's probably easier to navigate. However, that means you got to make your anchors going backwards. So that whole muscle memory thing kind of goes a little bit out the window. So let's take a look. We're going to start on the top. So this is where I was struggling that first day. Um, you know, we started here. We came across, I just, I could not get the tension right on that little machine that I was working on, which is a great machine for piecing, but probably not for free motion. So got my other machine back from the shop um, and you can see there, there's automatically a difference. It's a lot cleaner. 
you know, I didn't have to go back. It wasn't getting stuck as much on the bottom. But you can also see, um, you really have to be careful with that start and stop. And you'll see this one is a, is a much cleaner. You know, I come to that 90 degree and shoot up. Uh, this one right here, not so much. You can see I really didn't get it. I also got a little tangle in my thread right there. My thread broke. So again, trying to get my machine back and gonna readjust some of those tensions. Um, some other things you'll see here, this is where I pulled that. So I got to the end of my row and I pulled it down to the next, um, the next row here. And that's basically going to, when this, so on the back, you'll see it obviously, but on the front, when we connect all of our block pieces here together, that's gonna get covered by our seam. So I'm not really worried about seeing that on the front. Um, on the back, obviously, you would see that. So that would just be something you have to decide is do you wanna not cut your thread or cut your thread? Um, you could see some of the other little anchors, you know, some of them worked out really clean. A couple others, you know, definitely gonna take some work. This one came out really nice. This one came out really nice. This one you can see, um, I got a little spot where the, the tension got jammed again there. So, you know, the front looks pretty good. The back definitely needs a little bit of work. And I think that's the joy of challenge um, that we always work with when we're working through these projects together on Free Motion Fridays is, you know, some of these designs look really simple and they end up being not so much and vice versa. But, you know, we've had a year of practice now. This is our second year going into these and I think we're all making great progress. I love seeing your guys' progress that you send me. So please keep doing that. So I want to hear in the comments, how did this go for you today? Did you guys think this was a trickier design? Did you think it was pretty easy? How did your curves turn out on the bottom? I think that bottom of that anchor for me was probably the hardest part. So leave me a comment and let me know how it went. I look forward to seeing you next Friday in our free motion series where we'll be working on a background filling design. So a little bit less specific of one and more of a background. I hope to talk with you guys soon and we'll see you in the next video. Take care.